Welcome back to uh, the Web TV of OWF 13. We're here with Colin Charles, uh, Chief Evangelist of MariaDB, and uh, Dimitri Fontaine, uh, major contributor of PostgreSQL. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you being for here with us, us today. So, the topic of this discussion is new SQL, a new, s a new type of SQL technologies or database technologies that's bringing up. So, but before going into that, could you, could we start maybe? Uh, let's start with you, uh, Colin. Maybe just just give us a brief intro behind MariaDB, uh, how it started, what it is. Sure. Uh, thanks uh, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, MariaDB is an open source database. It's uh, fully compatible with MySQL. It is a branch. Some may call it a fork. We made this uh, branch uh, sometime in 2009 when Oracle announced they were going to purchase Sun Microsystems who had already purchased MySQL. We decided that we were competing with MySQL and at, o at MySQL with Oracle for a very long time and wanted to continue doing that. So we branched the database and called it MariaDB. Currently, we've, we've made releases now for about three years. We've done uh, many GA releases. And we, for, for all intents and purposes, we're a relational database that uh, is MySQL compatible, drop-in replacement, uh, developed by the community, for the community, and generally completely 100% open source, uh, and obviously fully compatible with MySQL. So if you want to use MySQL and you don't want to deal with Oracle, you will come say hello to us at MariaDB. And uh, what about PostgreSQL? Uh, thank you for the question too. So uh, PostgreSQL has roots in the beginning of the database um, uh, innovation back in the 70s. And uh, it's a project that, that comes from the Berkeley University. So it came out as a BSD software in 96. Um, and from then on, uh, we are a, a big community of users and um, contributors to the product. And there is uh, no company that owns PostgreSQL. PostgreSQL is all company stuff. Con <laughs> Sorry. PostgreSQL is made for companies and users and by a community of uh, a host of different companies. PostgreSQL is doing a new major release each and every year and uh, we've been doing um, successfully that schedule for uh, a couple of years now already and uh, we manage um, five production releases at the same time. So if you're still using a five years old PostgreSQL, you're still covered. We, we continue fixing bugs for you. So that's and PostgreSQL. And in terms, since we're talking about uh, open source databases, in terms of licenses, what kind of license do you operate under? So maybe we can, uh, yeah. Well, Go we use the uh, GPL v2, and Postgres uses the PSD license. Yes, we, we use a license that is uh, in between BSD, uh, two clauses, and MIT, which makes it um, uh, friendly to, to be used in uh, proprietary products and friendly to be included in uh, open source distributions. And I probably should add on to that, that uh, while the database server, MariaDB server, is GPL v2, we have connectors that are also LGPL licensed, which makes it easy for you to then embed this in uh, OEM-like applications without having to pay license fees. So we offer LGPL connectors to C and Java at the moment. So, and in terms of, uh, in terms of new functionalities, features, upcoming releases, what, what's, what's down the road, let's, let's say, in the next six months for MariaDB and PostgreSQL alike? Right, so the big thing for us in MariaDB is in the next six months would be the release of MariaDB 10 plus the additional projects of MariaDB 10 with Galera cluster. One of the, uh, I guess some of the major features include the fact that we're going to include all, all these storage engines. TalkUDB is a storage engine that uh, instead of using traditional B tree indexes or balanced B tree indexes, we'll actually use uh, fractal tree indexes. So this, this is useful for some data, uh, uh, data sizes and uh, data use cases. We will also ship the Connect Storage Engine, which allows you to connect via ODBC to an Oracle database, for example, and then join the result set with uh, MariaDB and save it inside InnoDB, or maybe even join it with the Cassandra Storage Engine, which we also ship. So we're, we're really focusing on uh, creating lots of these bridges to other uh, databases so that we become the data platform uh, of choice, so to speak. So things like uh, vertical partitioning via Spider transparently being done. So that's How about like integration with PostgreSQL? 
So we, we haven't uh, thought about doing that, and uh, we don't know if uh, anybody would actually request such a feature. We don't view uh, Postgres as a competitor, so to speak. We, I think we are both very good open source citizens, that we continue uh, working side by side with each other, as, as opposed to wanting to actually have uh, engines that connect you to other NoSQL solutions and so forth. So what about uh, PostgreSQL's roadmap? So they, um, to compare with uh, what Colin just said, uh, we just released PostgreSQL 9.3 a month ago, which is the current stable release, the, the most current one. And uh, it's been in uh, beta testing for the past six months before that. And uh, so we are already working on uh, 9.4. In 9.3, you can already have what we call foreign data wrappers. And that's the same thing as the same idea, but uh, done differently. A foreign data wrappers allows you to embed a, um, a, a connector, a driver, for uh, whichever piece of technology you want to, and query that technology from within PostgreSQL. So we call that the multiverse. You have a PostgreSQL central server that can access to any data you want to uh, with embedding a driver. And uh, nowadays, we have uh, APIs to implement uh, read, read and write drivers. So you can read data from Redis, update your memcache uh, application, uh, caches, you can talk to Cassandra, MySQL, we have that, and uh, we have uh, Oracle, Informix, and we even have JDBC, so you can embed a JDBC connection string uh, into PostgreSQL, write into it, and just consider it's another table in inside your server. Okay, and now uh, to start with the with, uh, with new SQL databases, so it's, it's, it's a new type of uh, database, it's very recent, so... Uh, Right. How did it all start? What, what is it really? Yeah, the, the analogy I like to give is that Google usually comes up with a uh, research paper once every uh, four years or, or so, and then you get new technologies. In 2004, they released a paper that you know eventually birthed Hadoop. A few years later, 2006, I think, they released another paper which eventually birthed the NoSQL areas, which started doing things like MongoDB. And just last year, they birthed another paper, which, uh, which is the uh, Spanner paper. And uh, this is probably going to birth a, a whole bunch of new SQL kind of solutions because they've decided to, that transactions are important, finally. You, working around transactions are not a good idea, so it's kind of cyclical. They've, they've gone away from transactions and they're coming back to it. But with, with that, they also have come with synchronous replication and a few other features, a lot of which we, we believe we're answering, minus the uh, hardware clock API with something called MariaDB Galera cluster. Galera enables fully synchronous replication, multi-master setups of um, your MariaDB servers with InnoDB as a storage engine. And you can, also do, uh, you can also span geographies. And being fully synchronous, it means the write is written to all nodes or to no nodes. It'll be, it'll be rollback. So uh, we believe that this is clearly our answer to kind of what new SQL is, is, is going to be. Dimitri, what do you think? I mean, it's the idea is with NoSQL to make something of best worlds when we take uh, relational, non-relational databases. But is there a, is there a clear benefit? Yeah, so the, for me, uh, NoSQL is all about uh, trade-offs for production systems. Uh, the the trade-off made by the traditional relational systems is that there is no situation in which you're allowed to lose data. We call that durability, and it's the first step uh, to implement availability. So th th really, that's not really a, a trade-off or a compromise. It's all uh, built n to never, ever lose any data. Uh, whereas the NoSQL um, trade-off is more that uh, we want to be able to have more flexible architectures, more performances, and uh, we are agreeing to lose some data uh, once in a while if it comes to that. So in terms of performance and scalability, are they better? Uh, only if you allow... Uh, it's it, too early to say that, I guess, but... Uh. Well, some solution, it, it really depends on what you have. You, you need to, there is no benchmark you can trust. So if you want to know if it's better, run your application uh, against it. That's the only way. The, tr the, the, the important thing is that either you are in a situation where you can lose data or not. So yeah. that, that's, for me, the right angle to... Uh, choose your solution. And then again, in uh, recent PostgreSQL releases, uh, we have implemented um, uh, tunables that allow you to implement that same trade-off right within PostgreSQL with a per transaction control. So you can, for each transaction, 
you can decide which level of durability guarantee or replication, synchronous or asynchronous, you can have in each and every different transaction, the settings can be different. And with MariaDB? With MariaDB, we're obviously making lots of engines and, and connectors, so to speak. Uh, we generally don't believe much in terms of performance. Uh, as he said earlier, you know, performance is something you have to be very careful. Chester application, they have PG Bench. We have things like MySQL, Slap, and SysBench. But overall, if you really wanted uh, to benchmark on your hardware, maybe one of the cool tools to check out is uh, the Yahoo YCSB, the cloud cloud benchmark from Yahoo. I think that one's um, pretty much unique and neutral to many of these uh, solutions. But there are so many benchmark solutions out there, so I can't say that the speed is faster for, for a NoSQL solution, because if you take away the durability the, from ACID, then you can make things very fast. But if you pull the power socket out, then you've lost uh, transactions. And maybe you may not even have crash recovery after that. So you may be very fast at inserts, but you may not actually be very fast later when it comes to crash recovery. So it's all about trade-offs and realizing what your trade-offs are. Because sometimes uh, in an operational environment, you can afford a 20-minute downtime to maybe reboot a server, but you cannot afford uh, to kill the server for no reason. So it's all, it's all trade-offs and you need experience. So I'm not going to say NoSQL solutions are terrible. There are, there are many available, but you need to actually benchmark them against your application or your solution. And where do you see the development of new SQL, like in the future? Well, for us, I, I, I see it very much with, uh, with regards to MariaDB Gallery cluster. But uh, I think there will be many other companies coming up with something similar. And maybe even with, uh, maybe hardware manufacturers are going to come back again, like we used to have previously, like Kickfire and so forth. Because um, the, there, is, there is no one company that has followed the spanner paper, including the Hardware Clock API, because the paper only came out, I believe, exactly about one year ago, October 2012. So it's very hard for companies to start up based on a paper, but I, I believe something will, will definitely start up. There are many other solutions out there calling themselves a new SQL today, which is a combination of your relational database and some no SQL technologies. But uh, I would say none of them are, are really new SQL per se. It's, always, it's generally always going back to this RDBMS. And I think both the Postgres and the MariaDB teams are spending so much time and effort on making the RDBMS more no SQL-like. So it's, it's, it'll fit in with your applications a lot so easier. And, and where, where do RDBMS stand, actually, with all the new big data hype? Uh, so in, in the PostgreSQL case, uh, um, the the way we are improving our solution now is by listening to the users. And so some users want to use NoSQL-like solutions. So for example, they want schema-less development. And we integrated HTOR, Arrays, and JSON, and XML data types to allow them uh, to work on um, schema-less things. And um, they also want uh, clustering. So nowadays, PostgreSQL has a really reliable and easy to set up replication integrated. And we are working hard on the next uh, level of replication within PostgreSQL, which is called logical replication, and which uh, should be um, in, in some forms uh, included already in uh, the next release, 9.4, next year. And the other uh, way to attack the problem, as Colin said, is that if um, you really need uh, a trade-off that is not possible for PostgreSQL to, uh, to implement, then you can use foreign data wrappers and just have uh, both a NoSQL and a PostgreSQL solution working uh, together uh, and in the end. Okay. And, and in terms of MariaDB, with, with where, where do RDBMS stand? Yeah, <laughs> so we, we also obviously listen to our users. I mean, probably a lot of the NoSQL solutions came up because they couldn't do online schema change for MySQL. Schema changes in MySQL were a uh, very painful operation. So MySQL 5.6 and MariaDB 10 come with online schema change uh, support as well. So you can do rolling schema upgrades relatively easily. We also listen to our users. They say they want uh, easy failover. So we, we make sure there are tools around it, like MHA, MySQL failover, to monitor all your masters. And, and if the master does fail, it'll fail over quickly to a slave and promote another one to a master. So we pay a lot of attention to our users as well, naturally. And uh, they dictate where we go next. And uh, a lot of users are highly, highly excited with MariaDB Gallery Cluster because it promises a lot of these things like easy clustering out of the box, automatic node provisioning and so forth. Also with the ability to do things like rolling schema changes and so on. 
So even though it's relatively early technology, it generally has great promise and I mean, it doesn't have as many users in terms of the core MariaDB server and we have some pretty impressive users out there, but uh, I think the future is, is probably around Galera. Right, well, thank you to both of you for, for this discussion and, uh, and good luck with both, both projects and the communities. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you very much.